Good morning and thank you for joining us for worship at Christ Church. Where we are building an inclusive community sharing Christ's transforming love. Regardless of our ability to gather physically, we celebrate together in worship today. The spirit of the living God moving through us and bringing us together spiritually in the community and love. We pray you feel God's presence in a real way throughout the worship service. If you are still getting plugged into Christ Church and want to get better connected to our community, you can text the word hello to the number you see on the screen and we will be able to reach out personally with a warm greeting from our pastors and connection team. Please take a moment this morning during or after the worship service to visit the church website ChristUMC.net to register your attendance in worship today and to submit any prayer requests you might have. While you are there, you can also learn more about our secure online giving as well. Our kids and youth ministries are still continuing to find new and exciting ways to share the love of Christ. If you or your family have not gotten a chance to be a part of the fun yet, you can visit the Christ Kids and Christ Youth pages on our website and sign up to receive emails and learn how to get connected to everything that God is doing in the lives of kids and youth of our church. Thank you again for being part of our worship today. Wherever we are physically, we celebrate that we are together in worship as Christ Church.
We're so glad you've joined us to worship together this morning. Thank you for your ongoing support as Christ Church continues to provide ministry in new and unique ways. Thank you to everyone who has taken the time to mail your offering to the church or continued to give or even started to give as part of our secure online giving platform. You can access online giving on our website at ChristUMC.net. We want to express our gratitude for you in the ways that you are continuing to reach out into our community with Christ transforming love. As always, let's remember everything we have is a gift from God. And we ask today that God would bless our gifts and multiply them for the work that needs done in our community and around the world. As we enter into this opportunity to lift our prayers to God together, I'd remind you that you can visit the church website at ChristUMC.net at any time and submit your prayer concerns to our intercessory prayer team. Know that your concerns are lifted faithfully throughout the week to God. Would you please join with me in this time of prayer? Holy and loving God, we thank you for the ways that you are active and moving in our world. We ask that you would continually keep us open to the callings of your spirit, to the movements in and throughout our lives for the opportunities that you are calling us to participate in your ministry to the world. Holy God, we confess that we do not always keep our ears and our eyes and our hearts open to your movements and to your will. Forgive us, O oh God. Forgive us and build us up so that we might be prepared each and every moment to be your people in this world, to stand up for the afflicted, to care for the hurting, and to share your good news with everyone that we meet. God, we lift up those pains on our own hearts. We lift up the people in our lives that we know are in need of your immense and incredible healing touch. Assure us of your love, O oh God. Grant us that blessed assurance of the depth and width of your love for your people. As we take this opportunity to join together in worship, allow us to be a people together who pray. For we know that our prayers to you raise this world into your kingdom. In, this, in, this mo in these moments of silence, God, please receive our prayers. Please receive the situations and the individuals in our lives that we lift to you now. Holy God, we praise you for your receptive ears and for the ways that you meet us. And today we close this time of worship by praying the prayer that your son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Feel the 
We're in the midst of a series entitled Fluid, Learning to Change with Grace. A really important question to answer when it comes to being fluid is, will we follow the divine direction from God and make our decisions with God's leading through the Spirit? Or will we let our decisions make us? Let's be honest. Who we are today is really a result of the decisions that we've made in the past. And if you're like me, those decisions weren't always directed by God. The question for today is, who will we be in the future? Because what we decide today will determine who we are and what we become tomorrow. Remember, the decisions that we make today determines the story that we'll tell tomorrow. And if we're going to be fluid, we need to follow the divine direction given to us by God. The big challenge for us is that many people today are not great decision makers. In fact, we have the problem of indecisiveness when it comes to making decisions in our world and in our church. The problem is there are so many options today that it's really difficult to make decisions. We want to please God, and we want to please God so badly that we don't want to make the wrong decision. So too often we become paralyzed and make no decision at all. Just look at the decisions that have to be made surrounding COVID-19. When are we going to reopen the church building? How many people can we let in? Can we sing? What will worship look like? How will we keep people safe? What should we bring back first? What's happening in churches that have already opened? What if we open and someone gets sick? I could go on and on and on. At some point, after listening to as many experts as we can, we will have to make the decision to reopen the building. But you can see how easy it could be to be indecisive and make no decision at all. So how do we become more decisive? How do we know if we're there yet? What I want to talk about today is trusting God's process, trusting God's divine direction. And I want to read to you from Acts, which includes one of my favorite verses in Scripture. Now, let me give you the context of Acts chapter 20, where we will be going to read from today. Paul's talking about uh, this very emotional decision that he has to make. Paul loved where he was in Ephesus. The people, well, they were his people. This was his place. He felt at home here. He could have spent the rest of his life doing what he was doing. He was extremely happy. Then Paul felt prompted by God to leave where he was and go somewhere else. And so he called the elders of the church in, and he explained, God is moving me on. And he had this emotional farewell with them because he loved where he was. But God was calling him somewhere else. And this is what happens in Acts 20, verses 17 through 24. Hear these words. From Miletus, Paul sent to Ephesus for the elders of the church. When they arrived, he said to them, you know how I live the whole time I was with you. From the first day I came into the province of Asia, I served the Lord with great humility and with tears in the midst of severe testing by the plots of my Jewish opponents. You know that I have not hesitated to preach anything that would be helpful to you, but have taught you publicly and from house to house. I have declared to both Jews and Greeks that they must turn to God in repentance and have faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. And now, compelled by the Spirit, I'm going to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there. I only know that in every city, the Holy Spirit warns me that prison and hardships are facing me. And now for one of my favorite verses from Scripture. However, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me. The task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. I believe when we look at the life of the Apostle Paul, we can see four steps to following God's divine direction in our life. And we're going to look at those today. My prayer is we can apply this process to every area of our lives and our church. The four steps to trust God's divine direction are the Spirit's prompting, predictable obstacles, certain uncertainty, and uncommon confidence. The first one is what I call the Spirit's prompting. 
Acts 20.22 20, says, and now compelled by the Spirit, Paul says, I, I love it where I am, but God's calling me to go somewhere else. Compelled by the Spirit, I'm going to Jerusalem. I love it where I am, but I'm experiencing something that's pulling me in another direction. I want to tell you, if you're a Jesus follower, you have to be on guard and aware and watch for the Spirit's prompting. It could be something really, really big where the Spirit redirects our life. It could be something seemingly insignificant and is having a bigger impact. For me, it was 27 years ago when I loved what I was doing. I loved where I was. I loved where I was going to be an engineer. And then compelled by the Spirit, I did a complete 180 and became a pastor. It was a big and life-changing decision. And it's been awesome. That was something really big. Now, the other day, I was about to text someone to check in on them, and I felt the Spirit's prompting to not text. It was something seemingly insignificant. So I called them instead. And what was a momentary call ended up being a, a lot of tears and a significant amount of prayer and an incredibly meaningful conversation. So watch out for those spirit promptings. You may experience them in big ways. You may experience them in seemingly insignificant ways. But every time the spirit of God prompts you, it's always important. Some of you may have been prompted by the Spirit to get out of your comfort zone and to fellowship with other believers in a Christ group or a community group. Others of you have been given the Spirit's prompting to serve in our community. Some of you may have experienced the Spirit's prompting to use your gifts to make a difference in this world. Maybe some of you are being led to start a business. Maybe some of you have experienced the Spirit's prompting to write a book. Maybe some of you are actually receiving the Spirit's prompting to go into ministry one day. Paul says this, Now compelled by the Spirit, I'm going to Jerusalem. Trust God's divine directions. The first step in God's divine direction is the Spirit's prompting. So the first step is the Spirit's prompting. The second step if you're taking notes, is what I call predictable obstacles. After Paul says, compelled by the Spirit, I'm going to Jerusalem, he goes on to say, I only know that in every city the Holy Spirit warns me that prison and hardships are facing me. Luke, like Paul, was an apostle or teacher who traveled to reach others. Luke wrote Acts with the overriding purpose to demonstrate the advance of the church with the work of God and the fulfillment of God's plan to bring salvation to the ends of the earth. In Acts, apostles began to spread the gospel further and further from Jerusalem into Israel. How far are we willing to go to share God's love? The Apostle Paul led the growing church and gave us a model. In Acts, he went to the distance geographically. Paul moved on to Lystra, a country we know as Turkey. Paul picked up Timothy, a new partner in ministry. Paul and Timothy then traveled to what is now Greece. On the return trip, he stopped again in Turkey, finally returning to Israel. In the ancient world, their stops had different names. Derby, Lystra, Phrygia, Galatia, Mycia, Bithynia, Troas, and Macedonia. No matter the names, they went on foot, perhaps on donkeys and even on ships. There were no planes, trains, or automobiles. The modern conveniences that we have today that make our travel very convenient. Probably Paul traveled 3,050 miles for 100 days. Remember, he did not fly with Air France with tons of food and movies to keep him busy. Both men did all this to share the gospel of Christ on their travels. So many predictable obstacles. How far are we willing to go like Paul and Timothy? Are we willing to take the time to talk to Lulu, the frontline worker at CVS, a neighbor sitting on her porch, or a young man in the park? How far are we willing to go to share God's love with others? 
Are we ready to move beyond our towns and cities to places we would not normally venture to? Go through tunnels, cross bridges? We know here in Western Pennsylvania, we are resistant to crossing tunnels and bridges. What are we prepared to do outside our comfort zones? We need to push past predictable obstacles. Like Paul and Timothy, God calls Christ's church to reach out to the world beyond the walls of our church, beyond the safety of our circles of family and friends. God calls us to be fluid, to be open. God gives us a divine direction to touch the lives of others. I try to practice being a citizen of the world as is true in my beloved United States. That means reaching out to others and being in relationship with people everywhere in Bethel Park, Erie, Pittsburgh, Connellsville and beyond. For example, I was in Peru and Chile last summer. In advance of the trip, I was intentional about practicing my Spanish on Duolingo to better connect with people. So I was on my cell phone all the time working on my Spanish. I also reached way back into my high school and college Spanish. My two travel companions often turned to me throughout the trip asking, what did he say? Unfortunately, I've lost most of my Spanish since the trip because I'm not immersed in Latinx culture. I still need my Spanish though to be able to be more fully connected with Latinas in Western Pennsylvania. Latino culture shares similarities with Caribbean culture, including food and family dynamics. But resting on similarities that come easy to me is not enough. I have to really work in areas like my language skills to connect with people. My Spanish proved useful when Imperatriz started chatting with me on one of my international trips. We were in the Chilean airport waiting and preparing to return to Peru. And we got to know each other pretty well waiting on that line. She continues to email and encourage me about the move of God in her life and others. Praise God. Amen. As Christ Church, we need to extend ourselves like Paul and Timothy and even Imperatrice traveling long distances. We need to plan ahead like practicing our Spanish. We need to be available to lovely people like Imperatrice. All this reflects jumping over predictable obstacles. So we've looked at the Spirit's prompting and predictable obstacles. Now, Diane, both of those lead us to what I want to call certain uncertainty. Now, let me say that again, certain uncertainty. Paul knew he would face obstacles, even predictable obstacles, but he didn't seem to know the details. So you could say he was certain and uncertain all at the same time. Let me explain what I mean. So often we want in our life all the details. God, show me the details. God, show me when this pandemic is going to end and what steps I need to take to get back to being the church like it used to be. It's like that old movie, A Few Good Men, which happened to be on TV last week. I caught a little bit of it. I you love know, that movie. You, you remember the line yes. where Jack Nicholson says, you want the truth? Mm -hmm. And Tom Cruise says, I think I'm entitled. And Nicholson responds with the best line in the movie. You can't handle the truth. I think sometimes we say, God, I want the details. And God says, you want the details? And we say, I think I'm entitled. And God says, much more lovingly than Nicholson, you can't handle the details, or something like that. I really think that that's true. We want details, but God doesn't give us all the details. I, honestly, when Jen and I started into ministry, I wanted so many details. How and when and what and where is this going? Now, I understand that if God had shown us all of the details, including all of the pain that comes from working in ministry, there is no way, and I mean no way, we would have said yes. Looking back now, from the other side, we can see the impact God has had in our life and in the lives of the people that we have ministered to. And I can honestly say there is no way we would have ever said no. That is certain uncertainty. What God does is lead us step by step as we can handle it. But God knows that our faith is not yet prepared to handle all the trials that are going to come. We, of course, want details. God knows it's not time for all the details. 
In fact, I love what Psalm 119 verse 105 says. Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. Did you hear that? God's word is a lamp to guide our feet. It's a light for our path. It's not a spotlight to the future. It's a light for our path, allowing us to take the next step. What do we want? Well, we want to know steps four, five, and six. God's going to say, I'm not going to show you steps four, five, and six until you take steps one, two, and three. And we fight and we say, but, but I want to plan for my life. Well, we need to learn from Paul and understand that the Lord determines our steps. We know that we're called to go, but we don't understand all the details. All God promises to do is show us the next step. Certain uncertainty. Sometimes people ask me as a leader, Chris, what's your plan for the future of Christ Church? Now, let me tell you that as I've grown in my relationship with God and studied God's word, my philosophy on leadership has changed significantly. When people ask me now, what's your plan? My answer may surprise you. My plan is rarely about the future. My plan is to be obedient today. Let me say that again. My plan is rarely about the future. My plan is to be obedient today. I cannot see the future, but I can be faithful to take the next step. And as a church, we can be faithful to take the next step. I know you want certainty. I still sometimes want certainty. The good news is we can have some certainty, such as God will never leave us. God will never forsake us. God will guide us step by step. Throughout the scripture, we learn God will advise us, God will guide us, and God will watch over us. Those promises are certain in the midst of uncertainty. The struggle that we are having today is developing the spiritual strength that we need to make the right decisions for tomorrow. We need to trust God's process, trust God's divine direction, follow the Spirit's prompting, be ready for those predictable obstacles like you talked about and live with certain uncertainty, knowing it's not always going to be easy. Now, before we look at the fourth and final step, Diane, why don't you take a little bit of time and, and give us a little background on who Paul is? I'm sure there's some people watching today that aren't maybe church people, and they might know, not know the whole backstory about Paul. They might just think Paul is this great leader in the early church. So fill us in a little bit on who Paul was before he was Paul. Sure. In the early days before Paul was a follower of Christ, he was actually probably the most dangerous persecutor of Jesus followers of his day. This guy, he killed Christians. He ordered the stoning of Christians. He hated everything about Christians. We heard last week that he watched as Stephen was stoned. Paul then meets Christ through a vision and has this powerful conversion. In a moment, his life is completely transformed. A lot of people think then all of a sudden he got to do exactly what he wanted to do. He got to do what he was passionate about. He got to make a difference. Not so fast. You would think he was off to the races, but first he spends time being prepared by God. Finally, he gets to preach, and we know he preaches in Damascus. His first sermon is so good, they all try to kill him. <laughs> That's what happened. How is that for a great start to your ministry? You give your first sermon, and now they're trying to kill you. You know, that makes our first sermon not seem so bad. Not at all. <laughs> he runs for his life. He's struggling to pay the bills. A lot of time goes by. He wants to preach, but what's he doing? He's actually making tents, making tents. Some of you right now in your world, you're making tents. You want to do something else, but you're making tents. About eight years or so goes by. He still wants to preach. Nobody wants the preacher who used to kill Christians. <laughs> we heard he changed, but I'm not putting him up at my church right now because we love living. And so finally, Barnabas vouches for this guy and gives him some credibility. And then the door starts opening after what? 
studying, waiting, praying, trying to preach, running, making tents, making more tents, waiting to preach, waiting, waiting, waiting. Paul trusted God's divine direction. We need to trust God's divine direction. God is doing something in us because God wants to do something through us. Amen. So we've covered the Spirit's prompting and predictable obstacles and certain uncertainty, which leads us to step four, uncommon confidence. Listen to what Paul says. Even though there's going to be bad and difficult times, and even though I don't know the details, However, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me. My only goal is to finish the task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. I consider my life worth nothing to me if only I can serve Jesus exactly where I am. Going forward, what did the Apostle Paul do? Well, he wrote the biggest portion of the New Testament that we have today. God's inspired word that changes our lives. He started churches across Turkey and Europe. And how did he do it all? How did he make such an eternal difference? Don't miss this. Paul didn't have a plan for the future. He had a plan to obey the Spirit today. He didn't have a plan that mapped out with this three to five to ten year long term goal set in place. He had some things that he hoped for, sure, but he followed the Spirit's prompting every single day. Paul says, I was happy, and now God's moving me. Step by step, Paul says, I don't know all the details. I know it's not going to be easy, but I'm certain that God wants me to glorify Jesus wherever I am. So if I'm preaching to a big crowd, I'm going to talk about Jesus. If I'm locked up in prison, I'm going to write about Jesus. If I'm locked up and chained to a prison guard, I'm going to lead him to Jesus. If they're beating me and leaving me for dead, I'm calling out to Jesus. Why? Because I'm absolutely and completely confident that it's not all about me or my career, but I have a heavenly calling to glorify Jesus everywhere that I am. Now, how does that apply to us? Where are we supposed to be? Well, if you're making tents, Serve Jesus making tents. If you're waiting tables, serve Jesus waiting tables. If you're a stay-at-home mom or dad, serve Jesus as a stay-at-home mom or dad. And if you're a student, serve Jesus there. Now you may be asking, how am I going to get from here to where I want to be? Well, first off, you probably don't even know if where you want to be is where God wants you to be. People ask me all the time, did you envision this is where you would be here at Christ Church? Are you kidding? I didn't envision anything close to this. Nothing close to this at all. In fact, if I had told you what I had envisioned, you would probably laugh. If you want to make God laugh, tell God your plans. Because God has plans that are exceedingly abundantly more than you could ask or think or imagine, according to the power that is at work within you that God would be glorified through the church for generations to come. Here's what's so amazing about Paul. In the early days, he's like so many people in this generation. He was all about me, 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 me. Let's be honest and call it what it is. What do we want to make? Let's make a name for ourselves. Why? because it's all about me. Then Paul progressed. It wasn't let's make a name for myself. It was let's make a difference. It wasn't about me. It wasn't even about we. It was all about Jesus. And when it was all about Jesus, he didn't need to make a name for himself. He didn't just make a difference in this world. He made history for the glory of God. When we get to that point, what happens? We don't have to worry about the future anymore. We just have to be obedient to God's divine direction. When we're obedient to God, we're not worried about missing out on something because we're doing exactly what God wants us to do in the moment. We trust that God will lead us where we need to go moving forward. Let's pray. Dear God, 
Lead us in this divine direction. Guide us so that we are not selfish trying to make our own plans. We want the move of the Holy Spirit so that we follow your divine direction. We ask you to lead us in all that we do and let us all be open to the lead of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. I've searched the world But he couldn't feel me A man's empty praise And treasures that fade Are never enough Then you came along And you put me back together and every desire is now satisfied here in your love. Oh, oh there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing. Nothing.
If you're just joining with us for this time of worship, we wanna again thank you for taking the time to mail your offering to the church or start giving or continue to give through our secure online giving platform. Your generosity allows Christ Church to continue to provide ministry in new and unique ways every day. Also, please remember to go to ChristUMC.net and sign in using our attendance button and share a prayer concern or give using those buttons. Again, thank you for your support and care for one another during this time. As we continue in worship, I'd invite you to join me in this Psalm reading from Psalm 34, verses one to eight. I will bless the Lord at all times. God's praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt God's name together. I sought the Lord, who answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Look to God and be radiant, so your faces shall never be ashamed. The poor cried out, and the Lord heard, and save them out of all their troubles. The angels of the Lord encamps around those who fear God and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in God. Are you ready for God's call? Are you ready for divine direction? God calls out to each and, each and every one of us to follow the lead of the Holy Spirit. And when we follow the lead of the Holy Spirit, don't forget, there may be obstacles, there may be some uncertainty, but the bottom line is, God is with us every step of the way. And when we put our trust in God, He will lead us where we need to go. Amen. Go in God's peace. Amen.
captive and break every chain, oh God, you have done great things. We're dancing your freedom.